Hey guys, how you doing? So, to love Java, or should you love C Sharp, or should you love JavaScript? I'll be TypeScript for that matter. This is all nonsense in the sense of work. Now, you may have a personal preference. You may say, hey, I like uh, C Sharp better than Java because I like the syntax or I like some nuances of the language. This is all relevant in terms of personal taste, but in terms of the ultimate language. There's no such thing. It really depends on what you're doing. It depends on the environment. Everybody's got their favorites. I remember back in the day when uh, VB6, of all languages, I remember when VB6 came onto the scene and they basically kicked the butt of Delphi. Delphi was pretty big at one point. Borland, I believe the company was, that created Delphi. And I remember speaking to a Delphi developer who was like, ah, Delphi is so much better than VB. Why is it being beat? And he, was, he could be right in, cer in, uh, in certain circumstances. Delphi perhaps performed better. Perhaps there were aspects of the Delphi language, the syntax, some of the constructs of the language. Perhaps it expressed methods better than uh, VB at the time. Very likely, possibly, who knows, doesn't matter. Because you got to look at the totality of the language, first of all. Uh, you got to look at the environment, right? Now, you may think that ActionScript is the best language ever written, but nobody writes Flash applications anymore. So it's kind of irrelevant. That said, and the overarching message I keep trying to uh, reiterate on this channel is that uh, the language is the least of your concerns. As you become more advanced as a developer, you will learn that the language is secondary to the whole process. It really is, it really is. The key about the languages is just understanding the nuances of the languages, its limitations, its strengths, so that you can evaluate based on the needs of the job whether or not you're gonna use JavaScript, or you're gonna use Java, you're gonna use C Sharp, you can use TypeScript, whatever. The only one you're never going to use is Ruby, of course. So people ask me, why do I crap over Ruby? So this is just a word of caution, a little story. So many years ago, I uh, decided to write an application in Ruby. It was, um, I think it was a site checker, if I recall. Anyway, so we wrote this Ruby application. Now, here's the point of Ruby. The point of Ruby is that when we wrote that Ruby application, and I made that choice, by the way. We first tried to do it in Java, but I said, no, 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 let's just do it in a lighter, nimbler language. Let's use Ruby. Now, I use Ruby because, uh, A, it was not an application that required uh, a lot of concurrency, meaning there was very few users. It could handle it very easily. That was Ruby's uh, big, you know, it would fold under pressure. It would fold under pressure. But the pressure that you have to put on it was quite a bit, right? So most apps, most websites, Ruby would be fine. But anyway, this was a command line application that uh, did not require a huge amount of concurrency. So it didn't really matter in terms of that. But here's a cautionary tale about writing something in Ruby. When we wrote that Ruby app and we deployed it, I had all my hair. Now, since then, look what happened to me. Now, I don't know if it's causal. Probably isn't causal. But just so you understand, pre-Ruby, I had all my hair. And for whatever reason, there's definitely a correlation. Post-Ruby, I've lost my hair. Cautionary tale. I'm not saying if you write Ruby, you will lose your hair too. But it could happen. As more time passes, post-Ruby writing the more hair I lose. Again, it's not necessarily causal, but it's just a definite correlation. So, so when I first started coding professionally, I don't count writing basic code on my TR-99 Texas Instruments computer. I'm talking about when I first wrote commercial code where I was paid to write code or I wrote a commercial app uh, or wrote commercial code. My first piece of commercial code was a website for my old business that had nothing to do with technology, in fact. And then my second paid or commercial codes I wrote, uh, I put up, put up a website for a legal firm, et cetera, et cetera, and so on. So when I first started coding professionally, within the first, I don't know, three to four years, I suppose, of doing it, 
I was a bit a, of a zealot. I had uh, this opinion that you had to use this technology, all the others suck, this is the one to use, and that's it. Again, for a certain task, new technologies would come out and would be a huge improvement over old. So it does happen on occasion. But these days, with the extreme maturity of software developments, as in, whether it be mobile or in the web space, or any other type of development, it really, the rate of improvement from one technology, one language to the next, that curve has really flattened out. What does that mean? That means the differences between Java and C Sharp, I would argue is very incremental. And they, they leapfrog each other anyway. I would argue that the differences between a modern web framework that would come out today versus something that came out 10 years ago at best, incrementally better. You see, you got to think about the technology ascent, getting to that top of the mountain of efficiency. Once you're at the top of the mountain, you're at the top of the mountain. So you can produce amazing web apps with a five-year-old framework. You can create amazing apps with a 25-year-old language, right? JavaScript, Java. C sharp, well, C sharp 25, yeah, C sharp's almost 25. It's going to be 25. It's not, if it's not 25, it's almost 25, it's maybe 24. Python, JavaScript, PHP, Java, they're all really old languages. C, C++, those are like 30, 40 years old. I don't know. You can look up the dates yourself. The point is, is that we've reached a point where the, language, the languages out there are really pretty efficient. Yes, in certain circumstances, C Sharp will be better than Java, and in certain circumstances, JavaScript will be better than C. Depends on the circumstances. So you as a pro developer, as you become more mature, as you become more skilled, you're going to learn to let go of this notion of this language is always better than the others. It really depends on what you're doing. So I was like that in the first, I don't know, three, four years, something like that, where I was really a zealot when it came to particular languages and frameworks. And at sometimes it was justified because of the early, we were in the early days uh, in the web development stack. That's where I did, I say, the majority of my work. As time went by, things kind of evened out, you know? Things kind of evened out. So when we went from Perl CGI, uh, view code, intermixed with the logic code type of development, those are the early days of web app development you know, servlets and Perl CGI, that kind of thing. Yes, uh, when we went to the page base MVC paradigm, that was a huge upgrade in productivity, like a 10x perhaps. So yeah, that was a big change. But And then when we went to what they call model two, framework less to framework based web app development, that was a huge leap forward as well. I think in terms of the web, and web app development, I think it really plateaued in a big way in 2012, 2013, maybe 14. We'll say 15, 215, it plateaued, meaning we haven't seen much change. So if you did a course in web app development in 2015 or 2016 or 2014, I'm telling you, everything that you have learned there, pretty much 98% will, will be applicable today. It used to be not like that. I remember back way, the way we used to build web apps in the mid-90s changed drastically, tra drastically by 2002. It was a huge change. I remember a friend of mine who had been in the early uh, heyday, had been involved in the heyday of the internet uh, boom, and he had been uh, a top engineer at one of the biggest sites, one of the biggest sites in, in the world at the time. And um, so he left, I think, in 98 so 95, 96, 97, 98, he was involved big time. So he left in 98, I think it was, maybe 99. Then he came back in 2002, and he calls me up, and he was like, oh, my God, Steph, this stuff is so different. It was still HTML, but it went from a real, I won't get into it. It went from something bleh, to something much more refined in 2002. And it was a big change. It was a big change. Um, and I remember telling him, yeah, yeah, it's changed quite a bit. So, for example, just on the front end, we used to lay out websites with HTML tables because we didn't have good CSS formatting at the time. That's just one simple example. Anyhow, 
And then the other big change, of course, was in uh, when we went from Flash development and HTML5 came in. When HTML5 came into the uh, picture in 2011, and it was basically Steve Jobs who pushed that through, I would argue. And uh, that was it. Ever since then, like, things haven't changed too much, just on the margins. As I said in many other videos, what has changed between 215 and now is the server models are much more sophisticated, uh, and the DevOps models uh, have become much more sophisticated. I think the DevOps models become too sophisticated, and they've uh, retracted, I think, and they become simplified again. Um, yeah, there you go. That's the story. So you can love a language. You can fall in love with C Sharp or Java or TypeScript, whatever. But at the end of the day, they're just tools. And as you become more and more mature, you'll realize that they are just tools and you'll find yourself bouncing around. If you can let go of the biases of this language or this, this database or whatnot, you will become a superior, a superior developer. I'm Michael Steph. I mentor people in the ways of software development, freelancing, building SaaS businesses, and much more. Everything that I teach and talk about by the way, by the way is based on personal, personal experience not theoretical stuff. So that's why it works. That's why it works. Uh, yeah, you can check out my standalone courses below. I got a mentoring program. Pretty, uh, I think the, my mentoring program, I'm biased, of course. I think it's the bee's knees, but uh, that's just my opinion and other people's opinions too. So anyway, check it out below. If you disagree with anything I have to say, positive or negative, challenge me, that's cool. I am not offended because I've learned one thing as I've gotten older. Uh, some of my uh, beliefs, some of the things I thought were true turned out to not be true. So I'm open to the concept. I'm open to the idea that I could make a mistake. I could be wrong. But as I've gotten older, though, my perceptions of reality have gotten just a little bit better. Every year I get a little bit better. Every little, a little bit better, you know, you get uh, the wisdom. So one thing I can tell you, 25-year-old cousin Steph knew absolutely nothing compared to Uncle Steph, ancient Uncle Steph with less hair. Uh, makes a big di makes a di big difference uh, those decades. That's for sure. All right. Uh, don't worry about the market, by the way. I'm recording this uh, April 7th. Uh, market corrections like this, meaning stock market going, that happens every now and then. Now is the buying opportunity. Now is the buying opportunity. Everything is on sale. Anyway, I'm not saying buy now. Uh, it's hard to pick the, the timing on that one. But anyway, we'll stop. There.